strongly suggesting he had blue eyes, a very dark brown to black complexion, and dark curly hair. Uh, the one, the one, um, the one article. All right. Ah, oh, I hate that. All right, but you can see it's matching up with what Jasher's saying. Zepho took Britain. Now we got the first oldest skeleton of Britain that proves Europe was dark. Amen? Amen. So, let me show you on the point with the. So now we're going to have to pinpoint how did they turn light skin? That's, that's the million dollar question. Where did the Caucasians come from? And there's many theories out there, but no one can pinpoint. Okay. So, Uncle Esau at the chapel. So what we're gonna do, I, I, I got, I did some, a lot of work, a lot of typing. I ain't typed this much since college. We're going to read from this source here. This is the Silk Roads, A New History of the World. I found this on vacation in Florida, and I had to get it once I found out the cover is printed upside down. I asked the vendor, I said, did they mean to do that? He said, no, it, it was a mistake. I said, well, you got to give me a discount then. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is page 105. Uh, this is talking about the Khazars. Okay. And it's highlighted in pink. Okay. So I got it on the screen, and I was going to read some facts about the Khazars. Uncle Esau at the chapel. Read. The Khazars, as they were known, ruled the steppes north of the Black Sea and became increasingly prominent because of the military resistance they put up during the period of the Great Conquest in the decades following Muhammad's death. So what they're saying is these Khazars, whoever they are, they became known to the then world after they put up a magnificent resistance. The Muslims are coming up, the Arabs. Muhammad's dead, but his soldiers try to press on north. And these Khazars on top of the Black Sea put a stop to the Arabs. So that got the attention of the Den world. Amen? Amen? Who are these Khazars? Read. Their effectiveness against the Muslim armies won't won them support by the constellation of other tribes who united under their leadership. It also caught the attention of the Roman emperors in Const Constantinople who understood that they were there were mutual benefits to be had from striking an alliance with the dominant force on the steeps. So this writer is saying the Khazars, by stopping the Arabs, got the attention of everybody. Whoa, y'all stopped the Arabs. So it says it also won the attention of the Roman emperors, who says it's going to be a smart thing to make an alliance with these Khazars. What is Esau described as in the book, in the Bible? What kind of hunter? Cunning. Esau ain't no dummy. Esau is very smart, very cunning. What word did you use? Shady. 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 Esau is very shady. He's crafty. So Esau see these Khazars to stop the Arabs. Roman Emperor says, we need them too. We got to build an alliance with them. Amen? Everyone's tracking? Amen. You want to read that last verse? Oh, this is how smart you are. Okay. So, this is an ancient map of Khazarbia. So, you mentioned the Black Sea. Here's the Caspian Sea, and here's the, the Black Sea here. Can you see the Holy Roman Empire? The Holy Roman Empire, this is where Constantinople is at. World history is so important to our culture. So Rome became so, so big, Rome had to divide their empire. The Eastern Roman Empire became known as, Const I'm sorry, right here, Byzantine. When you hear Byzantine in history, this is New Rome. And this is where Constantinople is set up. 
This is old Rome. Then Rome became so big that they had to set up a headquarters here to keep this side of the world in check. Everyone's following? Mm -hmm. So the Holy Roman, Roman Empire was constantly being under attack, but they had a little stronger base. Constantinople, or New Rome, needed help because we were over here by ourselves, and we're trying to keep all of these provinces that we won under, under, in control. So the Byzantine saying, these Khazarian people have stopped the Arabs. We got to make an alliance with them. We got to, because if, if, if Khazaria didn't stop them, right. the Muslims would have took over. All this became known as Russia. All this became known as Russia. Georgia, South Georgia, Russia, all this over here is Russia. But Khazaria were the big dogs here. Amen? Amen. The Cunning Hunter. This is the Silk Road, page uh, 106. Uh, no. Start, uh, drop down to a paragraph. It should be highlighted. It's so important. So important with the Khazars. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. All right. So important with the Khazars as allies that in the early 8th century. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh. So important with the Khazars as allies that in the early 8th century, two marriage alliances were arranged between the ruling houses of Khazaria and Byzantium. So important was this alliance for, for New Rome or Constantinople, Constantinople survival. Two marriages, two marriages were formed between the Khazars and Byzantine sisters. Don't worry about that. I can send you the actual okay. presentation. Okay. Anytime you want the presentation, I can send it to you. Um, so Constantinople or New Rome says, we got to, and, and you can verify in our Bible, that's how two nations would say, to prove I got your back, take my daughter. And he says, I gotta, you take my son. So now we're blood. Now I can't attack you. That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. So we got ancient proof that Khazaria formed marriages with Rome. Everybody tracking? Mm -hmm. Now Rome is verified as dark as me. Amen? Amen. They're just marrying Khazaria. Read. The name of... The name normally given to what re remained the Roman Empire in this period. From the point of view, Constantinople, Byzantium's cap capital, imperial marriages with foreigners were rare. Whoa. It's saying in Byzantine and Rome, marrying, marrying foreigners were rare. Like Israel. We only marry Israelites. Even in Rome, it's like we don't mess, they call us dogs. We're calling them dogs, and Rome like, nah, you, you Israelites are dogs. Y'all worshiping invisible things, and y'all ain't got no idols in your temple. Y'all are strange. So Rome really kept it up. Even though they conquered the world, they didn't marry outside their people. It says it's rare. Read. Alliances with steep nomads were all but unprecedented. The development is clear indication of how important the Khazars have become in Byzantine diplomatic and military thinking at the time. When pressure on the empire's eastern frontier in Asia Minor from the Muslims was acute. So he's saying, even Imperial Rome didn't marry outside their people, but while the Muslims, the Muslim persecution has uh, subsided and we got some chance to breathe, let's arm ourselves and let's strengthen our kingdom by marrying the big dog. Everyone's tracking? Yeah. Okay. The rewards and prestige given to the Khazar leader, the Khagan, had a significant impact on Khazar society, strengthening the position of the supreme ruler. Oh, maybe I went too far. No, no, we're that's all we needed. Okay. So, So it's just remind everybody who wants a copy of we're just reminding. And of course, I didn't mention it, but we saw this picture. This is the most famous Roman ever known. And y'all, we saw before, strangely, everything's intact but his nose, right? This is the Black Caesar 
uh, uh, Cleopatra had made for, for her lover. So Rome, down here in Byzantine Rome, they formed two marriages with Khazaria to strengthen their military. Amen? Amen. Okay, while, I'm sorry, while we was there, let's go to page one, 106, and you'll see a, a, a paragraph that the Khazars themselves did not adopt Islam. Page 106, it was, I, I okay, got to type it. Yes, sir. The Khazars themselves did not adopt Islam, but they did take on a new religious beliefs. In the middle of the ninth century, they decided to become Jewish. Whoa, whoa. So they didn't adopt Islam. The middle of the ninth century, which is the 1000, year 1000 or something, they became Jewish. Khazaria became Jewish in the 10th century. Khazaria married Rome. Page 107, find a paragraph up that says, remarkably, a copy of the Kagan's reply. Remarkably, a copy of Kagan's reply to the letter survives, with the Khazar ruler explaining his tribe's conversion to Judaism. This, the decision to convert, wrote the Kagan, was a result of the great wisdom of one of his predecessors who had brought delegations representing different faiths to, pr to present the case for each. So this is verified history. This Khazarian king, Khazaria called their kings Kagans. And he says, I'm gonna bring a delegation of the ruling religions and I'm gonna have a summit with these ruling religions. This Kagan or Khazarian king says, I'm going to have a, a summit with the ruling dominant religions of the time. It was Islam, Christianity, not what me and you were, Roman Catholicism, and then what they're calling Judaism was the Hebrews, the Israelites. Come, uh, read. Having pondered how best to establish the facts, the ruler had asked the Christians whether Islam or Judaism was a better faith. When they replied that the former was certainly worse than the latter, he asked the Muslims whether Christianity or Judaism was preferable. When they lambasted Christianity and also replied that Judaism was less bad than the two, the Khazar ruler announced that he had reached a conclusion. Both had admitted that the religion of the Israelites is better. So this Khazari king or Kagan says, he goes to the Muslim, I'll verify that I got this right. He goes to the Muslim and says, What's better, Christianity or what was the other choice? Uh, Judaism. So he's asking the, the Roman Catholic, he's asking the Muslim, would you pick Roman Catholicism, because that's what Christianity was to them, or would you pick the Hebrew Israelites? And, that, and, and the, the Muslim told him, well, Christianity is worse than Judaism. So now he says, okay, thank you. Now he goes to a Christian, a Roman Catholic, right? What, what was the second one he went to? Uh, when they lambasted Christians, they also replied that Jesus was less bad than two. That's when they really reached a conclusion. So he went, after he talked to the Muslim, he goes to a Christian and asks this Christian, which is worse, Islam or Judaism, right? No, he didn't ask the Christian in this. Well, which one he asked? He asked a Muslim, and when a Muslim um, put down Christianity, said that Judaism was better, then he announced that he, they went to uh, the religion of the Israelites is better. But, but what two groups did he, uh, did he ask? The first one he went to was a Muslim. Okay, let me see. Having partnered how to best establish the facts, so we'll have asked the Christians whether Islam or Judaism was better faith. When they replied that the former was certainly worse than the latter. Okay, so the, the Christians said that um, um, the former, he says, but yeah, that Islam was worse than Judaism. So he asked, the Kagan asked a Christian, which is better, Islam or Judaism? And the Christian says, Islam is terrible. So from them, from the Christian, he's saying Judaism is better than Islam, right? right. So the next time he goes to who? The Muslims. Next time he goes to the Muslim and says, what's better, Christian, Christianity or Judaism? And he, he 
he, they chose Judaism. He said Judaism is better than Christianity. So he had two different groups. This is thinking. Two different groups. And he said, and this one group says, well, Judaism is better. So he said, okay. He goes to the next group and compares, and he says, well, Christianity is worse. So to him, y'all both pick Judaism, which is not the Judaism that we know today, but he was talking about us Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew, everybody contract it? Yeah. Finish that up? Uh, it's better. He declares so trusting in the mercies of God and the power of the Almighty. I choose a religion of Israel.